Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. It's Sword Week, and Bungie has made swords the main priming weapon of choice for a limited time period. Well, this video is kind of late, but let's work with it. Have any of you here used the Ergo Sun Bowl with Unplanned Reprive? If not, good, as it's trash. Okay, I'm kidding, kind of. The roll is interesting to say the least, and many of you may not like how it works, but it's actually good when used against champions and minor enemies. So today, I'm going to show you why this sword build is worth the long-term investment. Before we start, what's your favourite sword to use this week? Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let's start with the general aim and the exotic of the build. Our aim is to make a semi-tanky and safe sword build that will allow us to close the gap and make full use of our sword in hand. Our secondary aim is to also showcase our Ergo Sun role and its benefits. For this, we will be using Nezrak Sin and Ergo Sun. To start with an exotic Nezrak Sin with its exotic effect, Abyssal Extractor, it states, Avoid damage kills, increase ability energy recharge rate. Nezrak's ability offers players the flexibility of getting back ability energy just from void weapon kills of any type. The benefit of this is quite huge when playing on Prismatic, for example, as it allows the vast majority of my other abilities to quickly regenerate without the need of weapon perks to do so. Using this on my Ergo Sun roll, we can garner the 200% to 300% ability energy back for whatever ability is out of use, which is handy for our cold snap grenades and incinerator snap abilities. Our second exotic is the Ergo Sun with its exotic effect, Unplanned Reprive, which states, Powered heavy attacks emit projectiles that detonate delayed void blasts. This is a copy of Telesta's exotic perk and is a bit of a hit and miss compared to the original version. Telesta's version is more precise with its shots, which allows greater damage to be applied against enemies. The sword doesn't follow this route, but rather spread the void blast out in a circle, which we can then apply to damage the enemies around us. This is more useful when facing multiple enemies at once, as while you're focusing on one enemy, any other enemy that decides to sneak up on us will then get hit by the following. This fits well for the build, as it makes its AoE effect more practical against multiple enemies at once. As shown, this is my version of the sword I got which is quite balanced in its design. It's not perfect, but it does provide the right amount of support to make it viable otherwise. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. Feed the Void, where defeating targets with any ability kills will activate Devour. Helion, where casting your Rift will produce a seal of mortar that lobs flaming projectiles at targets, which scorches them. A Facet of Grace, where defeating targets with kinetic weapons grant you transcendence energy. Using your Super will grant you and allies extra energy as well. Facet of Protection, where being surrounded by enemies will grant you increased damage resistance. Facet of Hope, where while you have an elemental buff, your class ability slowly recharges. Facet of Balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants mini energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And Facet of Purpose, where picking up an orb of power will grant you a self-healing buff, which depends on the super being used. As this build focuses on close quarters, it will be best you focus your setup on increased survivability rather than just damage. As shown, our fragments are designed for increasing our personal safety as much as possible, since we can still die from long range enemies' hits. A faster purpose, protection, devour, and our solar super is the main thing required that will allow us to play aggressive when using the sword, and not die so quickly while out in the field. From here, you can then pick which types of additional damage abilities you want in hand. For me, using the Helion is great as I can apply Scorch and Conditions over time while also having faster of grace on hand will allow us to activate our prismatic form much more constantly and consistently and thus provide that damage boost if our super isn't available on hand. With how the build is designed, it shouldn't be too hard to get your head around what benefits a up close and personal build should generally have on hand. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marks our top priority. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. I would recommend adding on a resist mod to help with elemental damage you may face up close, but we don't have the room to do so, unless you're happy to remove the charge with light and weapon surge mod instead. Our aspects and fragments should be enough to cover us though. A discipline we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via cold snap grenades. 
Although a damage based grenade would help with the extra damage, Cold Snap is the best if you ever use swords and want to close the gap quickly. It's handy when used against champions as it can either stop or stun them long enough for us to start our damage phase, or we can use it to slow down an aggressive enemy that may be chasing us. I would recommend you follow suit as this will be a game changer for sword users. Now with that covered, I would recommend you add the following onto the current build. Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% mini buff. Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff. Bolstering Detonation times 1 for a 12% class ability buff. And Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods we have the following. Connect Siphon for creating all the power via Connect Weapons. Charge up times 1 for increasing the maximum stacks of armor charges by plus 1. Powerful Attraction for automatically collecting all the power when using our class ability. And Special to Heavy Finder. Reserves. And Scavenger Ammo Mods are highly recommended for the weapons we are using. As we have covered our exotic secondary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits toward the build. Primary, we have the Blast Furnace with Rapid Hit and Connect Tremors. Though it's been noted that one for all, or Fancy is better half than Rapid Hit, it all comes down to personal preference, as I like to have a faster reload for dealing with enemies quickly and applying KT again and again. This is a weapon that is quite easy to get and farm, so no alternatives are required. Just do some onslaught modes, and you should be able to get the following in no time. Heavy, we have the Hammerhead Machine Gun with Killing Tally and Destabilizing Rounds. Easy to get weapon that's also quite favourable for all players. The following works well for the current void build we are using, as we can build up damage and ability energy in under a minute with the following equipped it. Great and straight to the point. While many players may prefer to use the exotic sword with harder hidden damage or have a range applied to them, the following is fantastic to take if you're willing to compromise on safety and play more aggressive for the finality of the product. I read that most common role to use for Ergo Sum is the cast of frame for the range and safety being applied, but I believe Vortex is also good if it's paired with a perk that does additional damage as well. Our sword has the ability to pot the little void ball on heavy attacks, and this here makes the build quite powerful when leaping the head first into enemies, as this can add light landmines when planted correctly. Since the kit focuses on void kills and using Nezrax, it will grant us ability energy via void kills which we can play more aggressive with thanks to what we have. As shown earlier, we have incorporated cold snap grenades so we can close the gap on enemies quickly while they are paralysed. We then have feed of void for that extra health recovery being applied when netting kills. And then after that, we then have faster protection and purpose, both offering ease to recover and enhances our defence as well. And lastly, our solar super can be activated if we want to go fully mad for damage, or just genuinely want to be more tankier when taking on multiple enemies at once. Everything here as shown allows our build to play comfortably in close range, but also allows it to flourish in the right environments designed for it. This can work with any sword you have in mind, but this sword and rod specifically is where it can become more practical. I do hope this build gives you some idea as to how to build around the Ergo Zone roll and why you should keep a few of them on hand. Not all of them are amazing of course, but some of them are just need to be built differently than others. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts and content shared, then please leave a comment below. While well, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and sub while you're here. The dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.